Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and before we start this video, I wanted to take a moment and uh, just apologize. We lost some data uh, from this recording session. Uh, we had a brand new device that uh, let us down before we could even back up. So we don't have uh, all of the audio and video that we recorded on this day. Um, we do have enough, though, to put together, I think, a good show and to demonstrate what this instrument can do. The organist at Church of the Jesu in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is Dean Roscoe, and he joins me at the console uh, and starts by telling us a little bit about the history of this varied instrument. This, uh, this instrument started its, um, its life as a Kimball that was uh, built in the late 1890s uh, for the Studebaker Theater in Chicago. It's actually not the first organ that was here. Uh, this parish was made of two parishes and that, that were in the neighborhood here, okay. two Jesuit, other Jesuit parishes, and uh, the parishes of St. Gaul's and Holy Name. And the first organ that was in the upper church, I believe, was the organ from Holy Name. Okay. And the, the organ from St. Gaul's went downstairs to the lower church, oh. of, of which there's still some parts in this, in this incarnation, okay. too. So that was a two-manual Marshall tracker, mm -hmm. and uh, the Kimball was brought here in the early, uh, either 1904 or 1908. There's, okay. uh, there's some discussion as to which date is true, but uh, that ended up here. It was three manuals, about 50 ranks, okay. and then uh, Kilgan, uh, Kilgan came in and added a four-manual console, the Sola Division, which is behind the grate here. Uh, in 1955, they also added the Echo Division and some things, some other things within the divisions as well. Okay. And that, would, that organ was about uh, 67 ranks ish. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe 67 is the number we've. So it was still mostly Kimball at that point. Yeah, they kept everything. My understanding is they kept everything except the orchestral oboe, oh, oh. which I kind of wish was still here. But <laughs> <laughs> who knows? It could have been beaten up or whatever. Sure, right. or, yeah. Yeah. So, and then uh, in 2011, uh, over, over the interim period, um, you can't really discuss this organ without discussing John Weisrock. Okay. Uh, his name is synonymous with this instrument. Uh, it's sort of his brainchild and in cooperation with, uh, with the Schantz Organ Company, this is what we have. Mm. Uh, over the years between uh, the Kilgan and the Schantz work, he added things and modified things and switched things out, but the core of it sort of remained the same. Okay. So. Uh, there's a lot of Kimball, a lot of Kilgan, and a lot of things from John's private collection, oh, too. Wow. <laughs> so. A lot of different things coming together. Now, it's yeah. all up here in the gallery. Mm -hmm. Tell me how things are laid out uh, up here behind the facade. Yeah, so the facade is entirely non-speaking. They did okay. that for um, sort of for maintenance purposes and ease of tuning. So the swell is uh, high up on the left here. It's double stacked. Okay. And uh, the choir is in the right tower, also double stacked. Uh, the grate is right in front of us behind the, behind the hood, mm -hmm. uh, which Shantz did modify slightly. They cut the, the tone openings in the, mm -hmm. in the front of the hood here. Um, and the, the solo is behind that, and the pedal is in both of the corners. Okay. And then our echo division is actually back in the, mm -hmm. behind yeah. the side altar there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's over, the, over the far right side altar, okay. and uh, there's 10 ranks up there and 105 in the back here. Okay, so for a total of 115 ranks, that's a lot of organ to get mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to let you um, just demonstrate some of it <clears> and kind of stand back. If you want to talk about where things came from, that would be really nice to know when, you know individual ranks. What's the Kimball stuff? What's the Kilgan stuff? If you yeah. uh, can tell us about that that would be fantastic so uh, I would I would say let's start over here in the grate and just tell me sure. what we have sure so the the first open diapason was uh, was new in in the Sean's work uh, it's made the uh, four foot octave here which was also new super octave. So pretty much all of the upper work is new. Okay. Um, so your, uh, your quint here in the diapason quint in the grade. And the uh, five rank mixture. Very brilliant already, and we're only still have another mixture to add. Yeah, quite brilliant, but it, it, it's not a, they're, they're not glass breakers, you know, they, they add brilliance without really being overpowering. This is what I call the Easter, the Easter mixture here, that's the, uh, <laughs> the high mixture on the grade, the symbol. Uh, 
definitely adds a lot of brightness. You yeah, know, you so only use that a few times. <laughs> yeah, think like last last verse of, uh, of Jesus Christ is risen today or what have you. Yeah, it's really really adds a lot of uh, sparkle. Okay, well that's our principal chorus there. Tell me about mm -hmm. some of the other uh, colors we have, especially eight foot here in this. In this yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of eight foots in the uh, in the organ in general, but here we have the second open in the grate uh, is from the Kimball. Uh, so if you think this in terms of in terms of these stops here from the Kimball, they've been leading singing here since the early 1900s, which is kind of magical to me. I think. It's not as actually as dark as I would expect for an organ in that period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and the four foot principle is also Kimball. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the gamba here in the uh, in the grate is also Kimball. So for example, when you mix that with the 8-foot Borden, let's hear that by itself. That would be Kimball as well. Mix the two together, you almost get a third diapason. really useful. Uh, it's kind of a, they, had, some, they knew what they were doing with those styles. Back then. <laughs> yeah, they sure did. Yeah, the voicing is just so crisp and clear and, and everything works well together. <clears throat> the uh, flute harmonique here is uh, new. That was by Shantz. Kind of a nice breathy sound descends in volume as you go up the keyboard. Uh, the Dulciana in the grate. I really enjoy this stop, actually. That's Kimball as well. It's just kind of a wonderfully transparent, hollow um, sound right out here in the open. Just a nice little accompanimental color to mm -hmm. uh, perfect for your liturgy when you need just some quiet background. That's really the magic of this organ. <laughs> it's really, I mean, any organ can play loud, right? Yeah, but yeah. the ones that can whisper, that's where the magic is, I think. So uh, having that when you're doing something around the altar, just winding up is really, really kind of nice. And of all the reeds in the organ, um, they were all new shots except for two. Uh, we'll get to those in a bit, but uh, this one was new, and of all the reeds in the organ, this one is kind of the most Germanic in tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a big trumpet, but yeah. not knocking you down. Right, when you blend it in with the, uh, maybe a little bit of the great chorus here. Um, here. Adds a little bit of growl to the ensemble. Yeah, yeah. It's... Okay. You also have two 16-foot stops. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. They're independent here. They're great. Tell me about those. Yeah, the the 16-foot V alone here, and I'm looking at the the cheat sheet here. It's a lot to remember what came from where. Uh, so uh, one through 12 are Kimball, hmm. and uh, 13 through 73 are Kilgan. Actually, in this V alone. And the diapason, again, 1 through 12 were new, and uh, 13 through 73 are Kilgan. And this goes up, or excuse me, Kimball. Uh, and this goes up through the second open. You mentioned, yeah, it's 73 notes, so it goes up to eight foot. Does the violon play as something else? Yes, the violon is in the pedal. But that's not necessarily a 73. You, know, you wouldn't need 73 notes to play 16 in the pedal. It goes through so 32. It goes through 32. Yep. All right, yep. so we're getting there. We're getting there, yes. <laughs> are there any? Are there other 73 note stops in this? Um, that's my question, I guess. 
Do, does the super cut to the play a, a the uh, so no, the almost everything right almost okay. everything is sixty one yeah so no fat. yeah yeah so here we have the uh, the four foot flute Octaviante uh, which is uh, Kimball. Is the four foot uh, chimney flute, flute à cheminée. Both very colorful and, and unique. So. Yep, yep. All right. They both kind of do their own thing. Okay. Well, that's uh, all the, the flute ranks then and, and reeds in the, in the greats. So I guess mm -hmm. let's uh, go on down to the choir because it's over here on this side. Yeah. Uh, tell me what we've got in the choir. Oh, lots of fun things. Oh, like so lots of fun things in the choir. Shuffle my papers around here. Um, the viol diapason, we'll start there. That's a Kimball. Um, and it's kind of, um, it's not quite a Geigen and it's not quite a, um, like a big open you know, gamba or whatever. Just for reference, compare that to the Kimball second open that I paid. Yeah, very similar, just a little much softer yeah. and smaller in scale. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, keep going. And then there's the four foot principle, um, which is uh, new by Sean's. Which is, blends in quite nicely. The uh, two foot uh, octavine here, uh, Kimball. a nice shimmer but doesn't I think the technical uh, definition of an octavine is actually an overblown flute in mm. French terms uh, so it kind of bridges the gap between diapason and flute um, we can look at that again a little uh, a little farther along yeah you've got a lot of, of, of uh, mutations up from there which I assume all sort of are in the, the flute scale for a nice cornet we'll talk about those mm -hmm. um, but let's uh, let's go back down and talk about some of the other eight foots in this division yeah, so the, the eight-foot unison gamba here is one of the oldest sounds in the organ. Uh, that's one of the stops that came from the Johnson uh, from, um, I believe, I believe St. Gall's. It was one manual Johnson that ended up in the lower church when they moved. And it was rebuilt twice, once by Wangren and once by Wangren Weichart. Uh, so, yeah, this is really, uh, this is, this is the, um, the glass cutter. Very bright strings. <laughs> the, the strings sound like strings, yeah. and the diapasons sound like diapasons. So there's no. <laughs> it's a very keen Kimball strings, and that being a Johnson is even sort of amazing that it was kind of an out Kimball of Kimball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's mate here. The Celeste is Kimball. It's a great sound. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's kind of spellbinding. Um, then we have the uh, is they're essentially melodias. The stops say uh, flute au vert and flute celeste. They're big open melodias. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are from the Kilgan. Okay. Yeah, those are from the Kilgan. But you can't close that down. The choir is. Oh yes. So yeah. Yeah. Them to there are, of course, essentially two other flute celestes in the organ. So we can, yeah. That's that's the big one. That's the big one. <laughs> All yep. right. Let's yep. keep going from there. The whole room just seems to move. It's great. <laughs> um, there's a, an eight-foot stopped uh, Borden, which is Moeller. Mm. I really enjoy that in those 
again, moments where something is winding, and it's just this wonderfully sort of hollow. Yeah, very simple sound, but colorful and interesting. Exactly, and there's an eight-foot stop flute in every division, and they're all very, very different, so very useful that way, too. Uh, the Dulciana is, um, is uh, Jerome B. Meyer, actually. They're a local, you're probably, most of the viewers actually are probably familiar with something by them. Uh, they're a local pipe maker. They've been around a long, long time. So here we have the Eiffel Dulciana. contrast to the other Celeste in there, and that very gentle one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great pipes. Uh, the um, That takes care of the eight-foot line, I yeah. think, with the exception of the reeds. Um, with the Dulciana, it goes down to 16, is that correct? It does, yeah. It's a quiet sound to have purring way down there. Mm -hmm. It gets along with the uh, the Borden, uh, the, like the second Borden in the well real well and uh, 1 through 12 on that are Kimball okay. heritage pipe work again uh, we have the uh, flute traversier at 4 foot the traverse flute which is, uh, which is Kimball and a little conical flute a few so It's new chance, and um, it has just a little bit of not quite chiff. It's just, yeah, a, just little, a little attack. Yep, little articulation. Okay. Very, very pretty and colorful. Well, and then, like as we mentioned before, well, you have two mixtures too here that can go on top of your principal chorus. Mm -hmm. um, let's just hear those to see what the uh, what chorus sounds like. Here. Yeah. The low mixture, uh, it's uh, again new shots, all the mixtures in that were new. So by the time you get there, you've already built up a pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> it's already pretty bright. Pretty good amount of sound, yeah. And then you add the higher mix. That's high pitch, but it's not. You know, too many in your face. It's just nice and, and, and shimmery up there. So there, it's, it's all well voiced together. Mm -hmm. And then we have a number of mutations that I want you to, to play with a little bit and show us how they sound and, and tell me the names of them because it's always fun when you've got a cornet that goes up to this many harmonic levels. Yeah, yeah. And I assume this is all new. <clears throat> it's all new. Yeah, that's all new. Uh, so you'd have basically uh, the basis for this would be your eight foot board and, and your four foot flute. <laughs> you can almost believe there was a reed on in there, that there's a little buzzy reed in addition to the, the cornet stops, the, the, yeah. those flutes, so they're all just, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In, in our concert series here, people have used those, I think, to great effect, like um, the Leo Sowerby Carillon, for example. There's no actual harp in the organ, so using some of those little uh, effects um, is really, really kind of cool. This is um, something on paper that looks really odd. It's the eight-foot gamba, the four-foot principal, and the septium. Interesting. It's kind of, you know, you close it down and accompany it with a string or something like that. It's a kind of, a, I, I use that during like Advent and lunch, sure. <laughs> that sort of thing. It's just... It must be a lot of fun to play with all of those and mix and match uh -huh. uh, to, yeah. get, to get completely new sounds. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then we have some reeds. Yeah, so this is one of the two reeds that made it over from the Kimball. Uh, it's an eight foot bell resonator clarinet.
It's got that nice mm -hmm. sort of um, woodwindy tone. Uh, and the, the eight foot uh, and four foot trump, uh, trumpet and clarion here, uh, that was um, <clears throat> uh, heritage pipework of unknown origin. Oh. I think they're Giesica. Uh, somebody told me they were Giesica, who was around at the time, but they used to be in the former swell uh, on five inches pressure. They're in four, on four here, and they've, um, they've never quite been happy. Uh, we'll see how the tuning is today. We locked out. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's all right. Yeah, we, the, the organ hasn't really received its summer <laughs> tuning yet either. So, so here we are. But uh, those are nice, bright, and fiery, and and, uh, and sort of have a French accent. <laughs> all right. Well, let's um, stay with our middle divisions here, and let's go over to the swell. Sure. Um, and tell me what we have over there. Yeah, we have um, another uh, eight-foot diapason in here, which is Kimball. So again, contrasting with the other two. Yeah, similar sounds, but different, mm -hmm. just different volume levels and placement. Yeah, right? absolutely. And we have, um, it's, it's four foot octave, which was uh, new by Sean's. And I, I really lean on the, the swell quite a bit in liturgical playing. It's kind of a, it serves as the backbone of this organ even more than the grade does, uh, because by the time you have everything else on, um, the grade just adds that big crowning mm. kind of power and whatever it is that you're looking for in a church organ. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, the again the octavine and the swell, uh, new by chance. Strange still, it's not it's maintaining the style of the Kilgan principal chorus, it's mm -hmm. not going over the top. Yeah, because the mixture here is based on two foot, so that's okay. where your principal tone comes in. Yeah, it definitely brightens it up. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and the again, the octavine, again, my understanding is in, in the, the French organs, it's uh. An overblown flute, <laughs> so it's meant to bridge that gap, which it does with the uh, the the eight foot Borden here, which is Kimball. Okay. Another very different eight foot flute. Um, continuing on the eight foot line here, we have the eight foot solitional, which is another Johnson stop. Hmm. So this also came, there were three strings in that organ, oh, wow. believe it or not. <laughs> so uh, we have another very old sound here. And um, it's made. It go the Celeste go down all the way to um, all the way to bottom C on this. The bottom octave was built new by Shantz. Lovely sound. Yeah. Keen but not loud and overpowering. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and there's a pair of muted viols in here. Uh, muted viols, uh, which are um, Kimball. to have both those options, <laughs> the darker and the brighter Celeste. Absolutely, and uh, the, the, the bottom octave Celeste are really yeah. kind of magical, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, so here we have one of the most unique stops in the organ, I think, 
um, and also one of the most useful. It's a, uh, an original Voltler Holtkamp Sparling Ludwig tone from, yeah. I think, from the 30s. And uh, it goes all the way down to bottom C, uh, but uh, the Celeste does not. Uh, the bottom 12 pipes were, were built new to just sort of fill out the bottom octave. Sound. <laughs> so, uh, maybe we should probably explain for those that don't know what a Ludwig tone is. Sure. Can you describe those pipes to me? Yeah, so it looks like a very thinly scaled uh, melodia, <clears throat> but what it is is actually uh, it's one pipe divided down uh, vertically up the middle, and there's one side that speaks. There's a mouth on both sides. It looks like a very thin doppel flute. Uh, so there's, there's a mouth on either side and a tuning scroll on both sides. And one side is tuned slightly sharp, and one side is tuned slightly flat of pitch. So you don't have a pure pitch going on yeah. there, but because the, the pipes essentially back up to each other, they share a common wall. So you get an undulation within an undulation. So rather than a two ranks of last, <laughs> you have a one rank, two notes. Uh-huh, uh, yep. Undulation going on. It's a really fascinating sound and amazing. And I, I've heard of others that, that, that uh, people say aren't really very successful. I've heard that too. So this is amazing uh, to hear this one that uh, does definitely work. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a tearjerker, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's, really, um, it's really quite something special. And it gets along really well with these dulcianas in the, in the, uh, in the choir, too. of sound just <laughs> <laughs> comes yeah. over. Fascinating. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Let's keep going in the swell then. What else have we got? Yeah, excellent. Uh, there's your uh, mutations here which uh, go along with the, the octavine. So they're, uh, they're flute scale. Uh, the one and three fifths and the two and two thirds form a cornet. Pretty standard. Uh, there is a 16-foot Borden, uh, which is Kimball, and that's also, of course, borrowed into the pedal. Oh, yeah. Works really well. Uh, reeds in here were all new except for the Vox Humana. Okay. So we'll look at that. That was a Kimball from the original Kimball. <laughs> mm -hmm. That one's a little more raspy. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to the one up in the Echo, the, the Kilgan box that's okay. in the Echo. But um, uh, the uh, Aubois that plays at 16 and 8, that's um, New Chance. Very nice and lyrical. Cornopian, which uh, goes to 16, uh, extends through 16 as the, the uh, wald horn. So that's a little bit on the darker side. And who built that stuff? Shans. That's a Shans. Yep, that's new Shans. Yep, and the eight foot trumpet is the brighter of the two. Uh, brighter of brightest of the three, really uh, brighter the two chorus reads. So, oh, the forefoot almost forgot that was new as well. It's independent. Yeah. Obviously intended to go with the, the trumpet more than the cornopian, maybe.
talks there, and it's <laughs> a lot of power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. gets up and talks. Yeah, nice. so uh, we have a set of chimes. Okay. Uh, there's a set of chimes in this well. They're Deegan Class A's, and they're on a molar pneumatic action. Okay. And uh, without dampers, actually. Mm -hmm. So they just ring and ring, ring. forever. <laughs> yeah. Sound like nice big Deegan chimes. Yep, it's very typical, yeah, big Deegan chimes. <laughs> <laughs> While the chimes are dying down, let's mm -hmm. um, go over here and tell me about the stops we have in the solo. Today. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so the solo is on high high pressure. All the flues are on ten, the reeds are on thirteen. Um, so the eight foot grand diapase in here is uh, large scale, uh, leathered lips, high cut up, new shunts. <laughs> sound. I almost wouldn't want to call that a diapason, but mm -hmm. they definitely mimic that early 20th century thick yeah. diapason tone. Okay. Yeah, it, it works with everything else that's in here, though. It's octave major is, uh, again, new shunts and, uh, again, all on, all on 10 inches pressure. So you start to get a hint of brilliance in there. Yeah, it's just, a, to. just a little edge. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the seven rank plongeau mixture. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, well, here. <laughs> well, that definitely threw the brilliance into the pile. That's, that's yep. Seven ranks of, uh, yeah, really yep. bright stuff. Okay. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> And there's, um, again, Kilgan added this in 55, so most of what you see here is, is Kilgan. These were new shunts in the, uh, the chorus reads were, no, well, chorus reads were, were new shunts as well. Um, the uh, violoncello is Kilgan. the Celeste. Eight foot Borden is Kilgan. So you have maybe a little quintier sound there oh, than all that, all that air pressure behind it. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, it just gets it right going there. Uh, and the, there's a four-foot open flute, which is really nice with the tremolo. Okay. I've had people in the congregation tell me it's a real flautist. Yeah. Like, they can't believe there's no <laughs> real flautist up here. So there's that. Um, and let's do, let's do these first, actually. The English horn is, is Kilgan. And these two, the English horn and French horn, I would put up against any Skinner or Kimball. Mm. They're just lovely. And the orchestral effect in the uh, French horn. So again, you get that nice yeah, bubble. Big. So the, the eight foot trumpet is independent in the 16 for our unit. Okay. Uh, so here we, just the eight by itself. And the 16 goes all the way down. Of course it's borrowed into the pedal. All three of these stops together, it's uh, Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's the again, the, like the third verse of Jesus Christ is risen today. <laughs> you can have the, the solo reads with the box shut and just ease that box open as it gets to yeah. Now above the sky is he's, <laughs> is king or whatever. Yeah, it's it's quite hair raising. All right. Um, so there, 
they're in, a, in their own box right next to the solo box. So they're kind of in this corner over here, the right corner of the facade. And they're high pressure, uh, 18 and 26 respectively. Oh. And uh, they, they're, they're enclosed, they're under expression. So that makes them a lot more useful in more ways and right. all of that. So, um, well, Tell me the names here. Let's yep. Hear a little bit of it. The uh, trumpet de orchestra is um, sort of reminiscent of almost a Harrison and Harrison orchestral trumpet. With the box completely open. That's with the box open, yeah. So on the bright side, that's on 18 mm -hmm. inches pressure. The trombo real is a little bit darker. Uh, that's on 26. big clear fanfare trumpets there mm -hmm. that have handy yep and again you can close them down so yep you don't have to be you can close them right down playing like the tenor melody line of a hymn or something mm -hmm. like that's really and useful. they're on a, the a shoe with the echo division Is that correct right? yep okay. they're on the very far left shoe here with the with the echo mm -hmm. well let's talk about the echo yeah um of course as i said located opposite end of the room mm -hmm. and then the uh, stops are all on that side yep they're all high up here okay. and uh, it floats right, so, so we'll tell just it where to play yep we'll just put it on the grate here uh, there's a, a diapason at eight foot which is molar which was from John Weisrock's home church organ I believe in Cincinnati uh -huh. when they were taking the organ out uh, he he went and retrieved these uh, this this eight foot diapason and it's four foot principal So it's nice, you know, sort of basic eight and four sound. Yep. Um, it's it's really nice when there's a cantor in the front or a song leader. Sure. You can um, put a, in their pitches directly. And <laughs> yeah, put a few stops on and leave the box a third or half open, and it keeps everything together a little bit better too. Okay. Yeah. So there's, um, pardon me, I'll get to the echo here. Uh, the corde nui is the stop flute in there, and that's a kilgan. Flute Konique is a Kilgan, so this stuff appeared in 55. Yeah. With kind of a very prominent upper harmonic. Yeah, definitely. It's clear sound there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And it has a Celeste, uh, which uh, this Celeste goes to bottom G, if I recall. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so the bottom five notes, four notes were, were new, and the rest is, is Kilgan. Okay. Nice. And the viol sordine, which is the uh, string, is uh, Kilgan. Typical <laughs> with its sauce. Flutes on with that. liturgical magic that you can just that's what I, I, into the service. Yep, that's, that's what I tell people. You know, I, I'm not necessarily a concert organist, but this is, um, uh, it's the best church organ there is for my money. It just has all the power and the, the range and the beauty and, and the soft things. And, and when there's 1,200 people in the room that can sing, there's more than enough you can put right behind them. And it's, it's just wonderful. So there's a couple more stops in here. Uh, there, there is a Borden, uh, which plays in the pedal. Uh, it's sort of its kind of its own division, but but not really. It's a Kilgan. Just a little foundation from yeah, a little foundation from the front of the room. 
and the, the Vox Humana I was speaking of earlier. It's a very different vowel sound from this one. <laughs> Almost sounds like a Wurlitzer, actually, yeah. it kind of is an ooh <laughs> sound, as opposed to the Kimball ah. Um, and with the with the strings and the flute celeste. Much more theatrical sound mm -hmm. coming from down there. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, the four foot chimney flute is the other Johnson stop. Oh, That's okay. the fourth Johnson oh. rank. Uh, so it's a wood stopped uh, stopped flute with pierced stoppers. Oh, mm -hmm. fairly thin scale. Oh, I have to turn the echo back on here. The flutes in that division are, are clear enough and that you can I'd imagine use them as solo voices against some accompaniment up here. And they do. And, yeah, <laughs> yes. It must be a really wonderful sound. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, and you get people looking around, where is, where is this coming from? And yeah, it's, it's kind of a, well, it, it creates another experience for the, for the people sure. attending services or concerts yeah. here. It's, uh, th this organ in this, this room, I'm sure you can tell the acoustics are quite nice. Um, really com sort of combined to create this this third entity and it's it's something entirely of its of its own well we have one more division yeah um, the pedal which i can see like a lot of american organs has a lot of borrows but you've got a lot mm -hmm. of independent stuff in here too yeah so it's um there's really well let's see one two three that's uh that's an extension no that's yes that's an extension um there's Four, I think, independent pedal ranks here. Okay. Uh, maybe six with the reeds. I'd have to count them up for sure. Well, let's just play through what you have that's independent. Yeah. So we have the first Borden, which is Kimball, and that's like the size of a tibia clause on a theater <laughs> organ. That's pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that plays <laughs> at eight as well. and at 32. Mm -hmm. So what they discovered with this stop was that it really didn't do anything below about low E. Mm -hmm. So Shantz built the bottom four pipes new and scaled it up. So what had become bottom C is now E from the Kimball. Yep, it, it's a stop, one of those stops again. That's, probably more felt than heard. Sure, yeah. um, that our microphones can actually pick up exactly what, mm -hmm. what that's doing in the room. But. <laughs> yeah, and I, those sound waves take a certain amount of length to develop too. So by the time you get down there, the pews are rattling and it's wonderful. Uh, so, and then there's um, the 16-foot the principle, which is Kimball, that's a metal principle. big edgy sound. Right? Yeah, yeah, and this the eight foot octave is up, an upward extension of that. And the the four foot four foot is an extension of that I believe, yes. And the um, four foot cantus flute is independent. For those times when you need a four foot solo stop in the pedal. Um, the contrabass is the wood open, and that's actually that's a wandgren from the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist over across town. Yeah. And when they were taking the wandgren organ out, it was a two manual intended to be temporary. Uh, in fact, it was uh, in the front when they were putting the Naren organ uh, in the back in 1966, John Weisrock loved the sound of this and went and retrieved it and stored it until this organ went in wow. however many decades later <laughs> six decades later or something like that so you'll notice here a very clear pitch line there's a lot of fundamental but there's a very clear pitch line as well you 
let's say you have two principles there with the quality of that edge, but it is definitely stringier and mm -hmm. yeah, It's got roller beards and everything okay. on, yeah. on the pipes. Um, the Violone is borrowed from the gray, okay. but it's worth talking about here too. Mm -hmm. At 16, yeah. So you've got that 16, and then you've got the Choir Dulciana at 16 available down there too. Mm -hmm. We often use that with the Borden from the Swell. Low string tone down there, uh -huh. <laughs> growling away. Like, and no. the 16 foot bass viol from the solo is oh, borrowed wow. into the pedal. So we have kind of three 16 foot strings in the pedal, including Dulciana, of course. softer than I was prepared for there um, sure compared to the others yeah the one in the great so that goes to 32 as well okay. um, and those uh, the bottom octave is uh, let's review that real quick um, the uh, from the great it's Kimball into Kilgan 1 through 12 and then the 32 foot octave was built new by Sean oh. and they're Haskell oh. So there's a lot of, actually a lot of Haskelling in this organ just to get everything, all the eight foots in the grate below the facade and with the double stacking. It works really well even. Um, Gets along real well with the board yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's go on to the reeds now. And yeah. Tell me what we have. So we sort of heard the rest of them in, in the other divisions. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the, the Waldhorn, Waldhorn Bassan uh, from the Swell and the Bombard from the Solo. So we heard all of that. The eight and four foot uh, here are independent and they are in review here, 114. Those are from the Kilgan. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, with its four foot, the 16 is from the Kilgan. The 16 and 32 are a unit. So the 16 is from the Kilgan. And it's right under the, it's it's on it's, it's on I think 15 inches 12 or 15 inches right there. and it's right under that arch so that arch shoots it out like uh, it, like it's really there's nothing holding it back uh, the 32 is full length it's uh, it was new with the shots and coming down from the 16. <laughs> Sounds about like somebody trying to land a helicopter yeah. in the room or something. <laughs> I, I understand that John uh, Weissrock wanted more harmonic clatter, yeah, and see. Jeff uh, Dexter from the hi Jeff <laughs> from from the Shantz Organ Company wanted uh, wanted more fundamental. So that's what they settled on, and I, I think it was got, got a bunch of both. <laughs> yep, yep, it was eminently successful. I think. <laughs> Well, there's a couple other little things on the console I wanted to ask you about. One, you have um, couplers for your expression. Yeah, there's correct? a lot of a lot of couplers in this organ in general. Well, yeah, I mean you've got a lot of different but, divisions, but but mm -hmm. the, the tell me how these work over here. Yeah, so uh, this here will make, for instance, the uh, the swell express with the solo, um, choir, tromba, echo with the solo. Mm -hmm. Of course, the echo on swell. And where it says echo shades off pedal one and tromba shades off pedal one, that means, uh, say, when you have the echo shades off pedal one engaged, only the tromba will express. Because both of those are on pedal number one, so they would you can turn them off. Okay. Correct. And, and of course, all swells to swell. So that's yeah. just coupled. That just adds the swell <coughs> to the solo pedal, so you can use the, the solo pedal to control both of those divisions or any of the other divisions that you couple yeah. to that pedal. Yep. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then um, I see some uh, clochette. Yes. Tell me what this is. There are three. Okay. Uh, so we have one up in the echo. Okay. Uh-huh. And then one in the swell. And then the, the big one is in the grate, and it's the one with the five bells in, in a row oh. uh, on a randomized striker. Oh, right, right, right. 
and it's adjustable for volume and speed. But curiously enough, there's a delay control, so if you turn up the delay control a little bit, <laughs> I'm not entirely certain. I mean, usually you put a zimbal stern on, you want it to come on, but yeah, I, I suppose it'd be useful in certain instances. Okay, I usually want them to go off. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then I can see you can also control tower bells here from mm -hmm. the organ as well, is it that just to ring the outside bells for... Correct. Um, yep, weddings, funerals, that sort of thing. Um, Easter vigil, we like doing all that okay. and uh, Christmas. So they're, they're controls for the three tower bells upstairs. Nice to have all of that here and built into the console instead of screwed on with some third party <laughs> box or something that was added yeah. later. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And a lot of times it's easier for, for, for me to do it than it would be to run over to the controls in the sacristy or, or whatever. So. You can see yeah. that. And there's, there's uh, memory up and down over here. There's controls for the piston sequencer and crescendo. Uh, 12 generals, uh, six divisionals for the echo, and eight for each of the manual divisions and the pedal is all down here, of course. And then that's all the Peterson ICS is all mm -hmm. hidden away in a drawer, so yep. you can use that as you need it, put yep. it away. So that's it's nicely hidden in a drawer. Uh, very elegant. Um, I like the, that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, the, the console was all new in, uh, in 2011 with okay. the Sean's work. Uh, but it looks like it's always been here. Yeah. It looks like it's part of the part of the building as it came, came with the building, as it were. So. so we missed getting into the organ, but um, here we are. We're actually standing at the walkboard at the back of the organ. You can see down the nave there. Um, we walked through a door and up a ladder, and mostly we're seeing pedal pipes right here. <clears throat> Top of the 32 foot V alone. And we're going back through a very narrow walk space. You can see pedal pipes everywhere here. This is the big uh, pedal die pace in here. Now we're walking into the lower swell. There's our oboe, and that's the Borden in the swell. It has been repainted uh, Kilgan orange. The Schatz company went out of their way to make sure that the uh, color and uh, the handwriting even on the pipes matched what Kilgan would have done originally. There's our clarion and trumpet. And we see a different flute, different color orange here, different shellac. That's the Kimball color. They didn't paint their pipe, so we have a, a different colored flute in here. And now we have um, gone out of the swell and up this ladder. We're on a walkboard now that's up at the same level we were earlier. And now we're in the upper swell. Cornopian and Vox to the right. And then the mixture. And I want to show you, that's the Ludwig tone. We didn't have a good shot of it for some reason. Didn't get that saved. But the Ludwig tone is the two openings there. Two pipes essentially in one body. And now we have gone out of the upper swell, down the ladder, and we're all the way down in the floor. You see more pedal pipes, the pedal board in there. There's the 32 foot. As we can see, the bottom pipes are new. Low C down there, and then as we look up higher, these are older pipes. The original low C by Kimball. There's the mouths of our double open. And then a little narrow walkway back there, but here's a ladder that takes us back up to the walkboard where we started. Um, and in front of the swell here, this is the pedal division, essentially. Pedal mixture, the cantus flute, and the eight-foot trumpet. I'll show you where we are here, up against the front of the facade. There's the swell box where we just were, and those pedal double opens. Back. Now we're going back to the walkboard against the back wall again. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 
<laughs> that box that's right in front of us there, that's the trumba and solo boxes. We go down a ladder next to them, and now we're in the lower area below the choir, opposite side of the case. This is the 8 and 4 pedal reeds from Kilgan Pipes originally. And the 32 is back here. But this is the Trumba box. It has the two reeds in it. The trumpet to orchestra's in front, the trumba's in the back. Cozy little area to tune, but we step in and now we are in the solo division. Bases are off on the edge, and then here in the main chest we have most of the treble pipes. Trumpet, cor anglais. Examining the English horn there, you can see, next to the trumpet. And then there's the French horn with the double scrolls. base of the 16-foot bombard against the wall. And there's the seven-rink mixture and lots of Kilgan flutes. That's our grand diapason nerve against the very back wall. Here's peeking down underneath, we can see that the violone pipes are actually uh, horizontal. And these are of a uh, unknown origin as to who built those pipes originally. You can see the base of the 16 foot for tuning down there. We're stepping back up, going out of the box, we're back down at the 32 foot and some of the wardens down here as well. And we're now in the lower choir, which is just above where we were. You can see the bell clarinet right there in front. Clarion and the trumpet are right next to each other. And we can see how they creatively use the architectural aspects of the church here to fit pipes in, some Haskell to fit, but arranged very colorfully there. Another look at the lower choir main chest, and now we are in the upper choir. We've gone up the ladder on the side of the box. Chest against the wall. That's where our tears and octavin and our borden is. Our four foot flute, and then the, the high harmonic stuff uh, is all here at the the back where it's hard to get to, but I assume you probably don't have to tune that very often. There's the mixtures up in the front, and our diapason principle and our kemba. More Haskell pipes here to fit underneath the very low case here we've got. Go 
back out the door, and we're at the top of the 32-foot bombards. That's uh, looking down into low sea. Now we're back down at the bottom of the ladder, and we're under the choir. This is 16-foot Dulciana, so we're technically sort of in the choir box still. I call it the choir basement. And then this is the door we actually came in initially, which we didn't have a shot of. But to get to the grate, we have to go back out. And we have a door here in the inset part of the case. this ladder and here we are we're on the block board with access to the grate which is right in the middle behind the, the hood as it's called see our mixture in front our eight foot flute Our mixture and our four foot flute and then there's a second chest over on the side this has mixtures and lots of chorus work here new shant's pipe work it's like one old pipe in there the flute harmonic octave eight foot diapason eight foot gamba quint and the mixtures and behind us we see the tromba and the solo boxes another look at some of the great pipe work as we make our way back out. Now we have to walk across the church to get to the antiphonal division, the echo division. So we've, we're have we back in the sacristy now where we use this handy hook to pull down one of these ladders here. So up the ladder we go and we're into the attic above the sacristy. has its own ventilation system to help pull air from the church into the chamber. It turns out it's a very spacious chamber for just the few ranks that are in here. It's the main chest. That's the corps de nuit that's in front of us. So if it's 8 foot and then the 16 foot borden is horizontal. Blower and regulator back here on the lower. This room was large because the church originally had planned for many more ranks of pipes. And in fact, there's a, a, another chamber on the other side of the nave that could have held even more. So there was supposed to be a lot more organ in the front originally. But now we just have these few ranks. So that was our tour of the organ of Church of the Jesu in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, my thanks to Dean Roscoe for all of his assistance in making that possible. We had a great time there. We do have some more instruments from Milwaukee coming up, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Some of them will be a bit delayed, uh, thanks to the little data problem I told you about, but they will be coming out in the future. Uh, we also have some more trips coming up, so there are more organs on the way. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you really would like to help us make more videos, you can do that be by becoming a sponsor of the Organ Media Foundation. You can do that by going to organ.media and clicking on support. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so your contributions can be tax deductible. There's a link down in the description to that. There's also a link to the church and a link to the specification of the organ and the Sean's Organ Company that did such a great job of putting this instrument together. There are also some links to recordings of the organ of the Church of the Jesu. Um, those recordings also happen to be in the library of the Organ Media Foundation, which means you can hear them uh, played on our three streaming stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Uh, if you weren't aware, you can also record quest tracks you want to hear, uh, hear us play in the stream on Organ Live. So you can do that by going to our website at organlive.com. That's it for now. I'm Brent Johnson. Until next time, thank you for watching.